Welcome back to another edition of the Night Report Podcast. I'm your co-host, Michael Broadman. Joining me once again is Richie Schneiderite. Richie, uh, we're going to talk hoops today. We're going to talk hoops recruiting primarily. Um, later in the week, probably tomorrow, we'll have uh, Chris on to talk training camp and kind of get an update on where the football team stands. But today, we are going to talk fo- basketball recruiting because it seems like a lot is heating up right now. But before we do, uh, this podcast is uh, presented by Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. You can find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, the NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head over to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code believe 50 that's b l e a v 50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts yeah i, I mean i'll be honest with you uh, i usually do caesars and like fanduel and all that but i, I did this the other day and i was like well 50% like how, how do you beat that like i'm not hyping it up i, I mean honestly know, like it's... <laughs> i'm a fanduel guy uh you but it free money's free money guys uh, i I, exactly. used, I signed up as well and you can't beat free money, so just give it a shot. You might like it more than your yeah. current uh, sports betting provider. Yeah, and I mean, if, and if you want to even make some more money, we got another one more sponsor. We got Adam Goldman, uh, the franchise coach, franchisecoach.net. If you want to check him out, he's uh, basically his pitch is is like if you're a displaced corporate exec or you kind of just want to put your career in your own hands, um, he can kind of help you out. He's a Jersey guy, uh, Watch on Hills High School uh, alum, Night Report member, Scarlet Knight fan. Uh, franchise veteran for over a decade now. He, he kind of uses your expertise, expertise to help you kind of find your, your own type of American dream. Um, it's a free consultation process, so uh, give, give him a shout. Uh, if you need his info, hit me up on social media or hit my email, or you can go to franchisecoach.net, or uh, you can give him a call at 844-800-3726. Or, um, yeah, I mean, uh, hit, hit up Adam. Like, I mean, you, you want to start your own franchise. I mean, he's the guy. Yeah, a lot of people are looking to diversify their uh, their businesses and their investments. Uh, uh, franchisee stuff seems like a very good way to do that. Um, so moving on, we have a lot to talk about with Hoops Recruiting. Let's start off, if you don't mind, with the upcoming official visits. Uh, there's two guys visiting on September the 2nd. Let's go off the top ropes here. Let's talk about the big fish who's visiting. By a fall, he is a 6'10", 200-pound center from Colorado. I know we've talked about him, but he's confirmed that he's visiting on the second. Talk a little bit about where he stands in his recruitment and what he thinks about Rutgers. Yeah, so uh, I spoke to his guardian yesterday. Um, most of these kids in college or high school basketball have guardians at this point. Like if they're coming over from a different country, like Bayfall and a couple others are, um, they're going to have a guardian in the U.S. that kind of like their parent type uh, type of situation, stuff like that, I guess you can call it. Um, no, he, he's, he's very, he's pretty high on records, which is really interesting because I mean, he's the number 12 kid in the country for rivals. Um, when's the last yep. time we've talked about a top 20 kid, like heavily considering Rutgers? Yeah. You couldn't say Dylan Harper technically, but I mean, before that, like mm-hmm. anyone ever. I don't yeah. Think I mean, Lance Thomas comes to mind, but that was what, like yeah. 2005 roughly something like that. Yeah. So th- this is really interesting. Um, uh, he technically, so he's from, he's, he's in Colorado. He's not from Colorado. Um, he's in Colorado playing his high school ball. He was at Denver Prep Academy, but he got kicked out from what it sounds like. And, like, the coach put out a statement. The school put out a statement. Then all of a sudden, the school closed. So it's, it's a very sketchy situation. It's a little weird. I don't know if I blame him as much as the school just being, like, weird about the whole situation. I feel like a lot of couple, like, a couple other high schools would probably, like, reaching out to him and probably saying like, hey, if you came here, like, you, we could get you more attention, blah, blah, blah. And they probably didn't like that. And they were probably, they put out a statement saying, hey, if you do this stuff, you're gonna keep thinking about transferring, like, get out. That's my assumption. This is based on the rumor I heard, but that's about it. Um, and they, they heard that and they were just kind of like, no, like, get out of here, like, we don't want you anymore. And then all of a sudden they're like, fine, then you don't get any funding. And it's like, there goes the school <laughs> completely. And now it's permanently closed, yeah. temporarily closed. AKA permanently, but um, yeah, so it, it's a very weird situation out there. But uh, I mean, regardless, the kid's a top 
twelve. I think he's uh, like I said. I think he's number twelve in the country for revivals. He's a top like ten prospect. He's phenomenal. He's a huge big man. Uh, he would immediately fill the position of Quiff, and then some. His uh, his offensive skill set is way beyond Quiff's already. His defensive skill set's there. Um, he of course like most big men in high school. He's he's six ten, two hundred pounds. He needs to pack on weight. I don't think there's any question about that. But that's kind of the way the game is developing a little bit now, too, where you get those skinnier big men that can kind of do a little bit of everything. So, I mean, look at Chet Holgram. What was he, number two in the draft? And he's seven foot, yep. maybe 200 pounds, if he's lucky. Yep. Like, so, I mean, this is this is huge for Rutgers to get him on campus. He is an Arkansas lean at the moment. But to get him on campus, and then maybe you could show him the love a little bit and make him feel at home. And, and then kind of go from there. Show him what Cliff's done over the past three years. Tell him about Caleb's... NIL deals and how Caleb was able to stay for a, a fifth, sixth year, whatever he's in, and be like, hey, like we got you NIL, we got you this brand new practice facility, we got you this, we got you that. Make, I don't think it's going to work out in the end, but the fact that you're getting one on official visit in the first place is just huge for Rutgers. Yeah, I think Rutgers has a, a tough spot because you're, you're basically competing against teams who are just openly throwing money at people and Rutgers is not going to do that. Rutgers is always going to play things by the book based on just how we've heard about how they operate. And, uh, the NCAA likes to pick on the small fish. Like there's a, there's a good joke that like, uh, the NCAA was so mad at, uh, Kentucky for their violations that they gave UAB another year, of, uh, of, of punishment or something like that. But they don't really target big schools, but they will target little schools because it's it's showing that they're doing something, but at the same time not addressing the problem. Uh, so they need to get good with their messaging about, hey, you come here, you have NIL opportunities. We're not going to throw money at you, but we take care, we make sure that our guys are taken care of once they get on, on campus. And that could that's kind of a gray area, but at the same time, we we really need to include that somehow in the pitch. Um, but at the same time, not break any rules. So it's a it's a tough tightrope to to walk. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting so the, one because like you see these other schools are just like these boosters are like hey here's a mil here's or Nico Lamavella mm -hmm. Lamavella is getting eight mil and it's like how do you work that in because usually yep. the schools can't be involved but they can be in, but they're not involved but they are involved. Like, I don't know if you saw this, which is going to open up another can of worms, but Malachi Nelson, the, the top recruit from next year's class, Clutch, signed with Clutch, Clutch Sports Clutch. today, the first high school athlete to, to sign with an agency. And, I mean, they're super powerful in the sports agency world, so who knows where that's going to lead, uh, college athletics and, and recruitment in general. But Because uh, there's a lot of rumors that Texas A&M offered him a ton of money. No, never. That's, that's not why he visited. No, not Texas A&M. A week or two weeks ago, whatever it was. Like, no. Mm -hmm. Come on. Like, is they, we got to stop playing dumb. Like, this is this is happening. Like, it's there's no way around it. Yep. Uh, the other player taking an official visit uh, on the second is a, a, a less less high-rated recruit. His name's Trey Norman. Uh, he goes to school at Worcester, Wor Worcester Academy, I guess you'd say it if you're from Massachusetts. Worcester, Worcester Academy in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, he actually doesn't have a Rutgers offer right now, if I uh, recall correctly. Uh, tell us a little bit about him and where he kind of sits on the, the rankings of uh, staff. <clears throat> Yeah, so he, he's a little bit more interesting. Um, so I, I don't know for a fact that he doesn't have an offer. Like, he's out – like, there's some sources out there – or I shouldn't say sources. There's some people on Twitter that are out here reporting that, like, he has an offer. Um, but then you look – like, you talk to the kid, and he's like, yeah, I know, Rutgers didn't offer me. And I'm like, all right, well, what what's going on here? There's some miscommunication there. But, um, I mean, Rutgers is definitely showing a ton of interest. He, I think his only other high major offers are, like, Marquette, Miami, and um, – Texas A&M, I don't think you consider Georgetown a high major, but, I mean, that's up for debate, whatever. Um, he's, he's an interesting guard. He, he's a little bit bigger for a guard. He's, like, 6'3". I think he's 180, something like that. Uh, he, he could score. He looked pretty good at Peach Jam. Um, I know a lot of uh, a lot of rivals guys were hyping him up. I know specifically, like, our, our national analyst, like, Travis Graff, who actually used to write for our site before he got to uh, the national level, kind of spoke – pretty highly of them. I think he averaged something like 20 something points per game and like almost nine rebounds per game in the peach jam, which is like oh, wow. a crazy amount, of, a crazy amount of rebounds for a guard. It's at six, three. 
So a lot of effort, and you can kind of see why Pike likes a guy like him. Um, I think he'd be a pretty nice fit next to, not next to, but like alongside Gavin Griffiths with this team. Um, it, it's something to monitor for sure. How much do they want him is the big question because there, there's still going to be a lot of guards up there for grabs. It does sound like he's a near, I shouldn't say near the top, but he's definitely in the in the mix, we'll put it like that, because I think they're going to aim a little, a little bit higher because they're going to sell the whole thing about Gavin Griffiths. They're going to sell the potential of playing with Dylan Harper down the line and all that stuff, but um, I, I do think they're going to aim a little bit higher in 23, but he could be a guy that could be good enough just to take now and you kind of you, you trust pike you kind of do like just because he's yep. he's grabbed guys like Derek simpson who's been pretty damn good so far he's skinny of course but if he didn't play at winape and played anywhere else he probably would have had like 10 more offers you trust him with geo yep. you trust him with ron like you trust him to grab these good guards like i think cam spencer's a hell of a grab for a transfer portal guy and and people know like yeah pike isn't the biggest transfer portal dude in the world but cam spencer is gonna be a phenomenal addition he might be the top scorer next year. But um, I think at this point, yep. you kind of just trust Pike. If they want to take him, you, you you take him, and you get pretty excited because <laughs> the guy averaged eight rebounds in Peach Jam. Peach Jam's no joke. Like, it's it's the top of the top, AAU at least. I know AAU's ball's weird. It's not like it's like YMCA ball, but, like, it's still impressive. No, it, it is. It's kind of like an all-star game where sometimes the all-star game is super competitive. Sometimes it's just like a dunk contest. It really just depends on, you know, if the A team's playing, the B team's playing, if you guys are knocked out of the tournament. It's There's a lot that goes into it, but typically the talent level is pretty damn high at these big AAU tournaments. Um, yep. So it sounds like he's more of a, a plan B type recruit um, from what you're saying. Now, we also had another visitor like yesterday, and... He- could be type A. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Mike. But he could—he could be like. No, no, no. You're all, it's all good. And they, they, they could take him if if everything goes well. I could see them kind of giving him that visit and kind of being like, "All right, I don't know what the deal is with like workouts and stuff, but like you might be able to snag like like if he if he wants to commit, I don't know if you could tell him no. Put it like that. Yeah, it seems like Pike really takes those official visits seriously as a feeling out process. Because remember Mac McClung, he had all the talent in the world. He comes on a visit, suddenly we're parting ways because it wasn't a good fit. Um, and likewise, sometimes there's an under the radar guy who, as soon as he gets him on campus, he loves him, and then he tries really hard to get him to commit. So um, I guess we'll see how the workout goes, if there's a workout, and how they vibe on campus, both with the team and with the coaching staff. Um, but there was a t- class of 24 recruit yesterday who visited, uh, his name's Emmanuel Okitando. And I, I, that, I said that way better than I did earlier today. Um, he's a six, seven shooting guard or sorry, sh- six, seven small forward, uh, who's now at Oak Hill Academy, which used to be like the top prep school in the country. Um, back in the day, now it's just a really good one. Uh, tell us a little bit about this kid, um, where he kind of came out of, cause I hadn't really heard that name until like yesterday, honestly. Um, so yes. tell us a little about this kid. So that that one's interesting because it wasn't just him that visited yesterday. So I found out um, it was him, obviously, that visited. He's I, I don't know if he's at Oak Hill or for Archbishop Carroll. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I've, I've had one person tell me he's at Oak Hill currently. I've had another person tell me he's at Archbishop Carroll, which is in Maryland, D.C. area. Um, it would make more sense if he was in the D.C. area because there was another D.C. recruit on campus and Rob Dockery who's number 78 in the country right now. So they're, they're starting to build this like reputation in the DMV of being like a, I don't want to call them the new the new Maryland, but like Maryland back in the day used to be able to lock down that DMV area really well. Now Rutgers is starting to like inch their way in there a little bit. And that that's partially in part because of the Hall of Fame assistant, Carl Hobbs. He's got a ton of connections. I talked to Emmanuel the other day and that all he talked about was how like this coaching staff, the coaching staff, every time I asked him like, yeah, what stood out about the visit? Like, he was like, oh, the coaching staff. And I was like, all right, what'd they say? And he's like, dude, I just love them. Like, they're just nice. They're nice people. Like, they're just great guys. They're, they're really, like, informative. They tell you everything you need to know. They're honest with you, blah, blah, blah. All the, all, all the good stuff that you usually hear from visits. But he just had, like, a different emphasis and a different tone when he was talking to me about them. Um, obviously, we'll have an article later on, on that later on in the week. But he, he just spoke so highly of this coaching staff. And Carl Hobbs is doing a hell of a job in the DMV. And everyone keeps asking me, even on the message boards, they're like, how is Rutgers doing this? Are they paying people? Are they paying people? Like, 
No, they're just... This is what winning does. When you win, you start getting recruits. Like, it's that simple. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. It's nothing... It's, yep. There's no, like, other way around it. Like, you win, you get recruits. You win... And winning solves everything. That That's all it is at the end of the day. Yep. NIL is always going to be there. You're not going to get those top five stars <clears> or whatever. But you, if you win, you'll still get top-tier guys. And you make the tournament every year. That's what we're hearing recruits tell us now. They're like, yeah, Rutgers is a great team. Like, they made the tournament, like, the past three years. And it's like, this is awesome. Like, I could definitely go there and make the tournament. So, I mean, it, it, but between those two visits, like, it's, it's, it's huge for Rutgers to get these on, on campus. It might just be a stepping stone in the recruitment, but the fact that you're getting top 100 guys on campus consistently is just huge. Plus, at the same time, most of these kids have been on campus for a game at this point, and they've been to a lot of other places as well, and they can compare and see, oh, the Rutgers atmosphere was way better than Pittsburgh. It was way better than Temple. It was way better than Maryland. And that plays a big part. These kids are young. And the, some of the things that matter to them aren't really the, you know, the things that should matter. But like you know, going and seeing like a sold out arena and just hearing like this roar that every time there was a big play, like kids want to play in front of that. And I think that's been such a huge recruiting tool for Pike now that he's able to have these arenas full again, and now that he has a good team. Um, so I, I wouldn't play that down either because Rucker the rack. Or, Jersey Mike's is always an intimidating place to play, but it's been consistently intimidating for the last three or four years. Whereas back when we were in school, it would be like one or two games a year would get totally raucous like it is every night now. Um, so you'll have an article about him in the next week. So we'll, we'll find out a little bit more about him. Um, let's talk a little bit about Dylan Harper. Uh, one of the top recruits in this class of 24 class. Seems like there's a lot of positive steam building for Rutgers in this recruitment. Sounds like there might have been some rumors about uh, him talking up Rutgers to his AAU teammates, talking about maybe getting together and playing. Uh, tell us what you're hearing about Dylan Harper. Yeah, so uh, he plays for the New York Rens, which is like arguably, I, I shouldn't say arguably, it is one of the top teams in the country for AAU. Um, they just finished number two in the Peach Jam. I forget who they lost to exactly, but uh, I think it was a Georgia team or a Florida team, one of those two, but whatever. I mean, they're still number two in the Peach Jam, but uh, the apparent rumor is it's like he's talking to other guys and trying to see like how much hype he can kind of build behind this this whole like Rutgers thing. Like yeah, he's he's telling people like, hey, there's Gavin Griffs there. Like he's gonna be like our shooter. I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna be the ball like main ball handler slash scorer type guy. If, if you were there, like, we could kind of do this thing. We can make it, we can make the Final Four, like, if we just need one more piece. So he, he's playing currently with, like, a guy like Pop Conte he's playing with. He's playing with uh, Tyler Betsy, another Rutgers uh, offer recently. Um, so, I, I mean, apparently he's, he's talking it up quite a bit. And uh, I'd, I'd argue right now, and I know it sounds crazy to say, but I'd probably argue Rutgers is the front runner in Dylan Harper's recruitment. I know Indiana's right there, and they're, they're making a weird – push which we, we talked about off uh, off camera it's so weird that indiana is pushing because like it seems like ron and indiana just don't like each other so i so know why the hell would, why well the hell would i mean go there all of a sudden <laughs> i mean ron basically owns indiana university so i don't see why he would let his uh, younger brother go to his son's school so oh there, there you go <laughs> I mean, he literally hit the game when he shot one like this with the fucking, uh, the, the, the balls thing. Yeah, like, the big ooh, balls ooh, thing. Ooh, that was oh, one oh, of the funniest oh, moments geez. I've seen as a Rutgers fan. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I... Oh, that's hilarious. And I love that people got that picture, like, perfectly. But, uh, yeah, anyway, mm -hmm. I mean, why, why the hell? Like, there's no way he's going to go there. I mean, they, they could show as much love as they want. I don't think it happens there. Um... But they're, they're still making a serious push. Um, the other team that I've always heard, like, in his recruitment, that everyone everyone talks about him loving is Villanova. But Jay Wright's not there anymore. This might be a totally different Villanova team. Yep. Who knows if Kyle Neptune's any good? Like, th this guy might falter in year one, and everyone's gonna be like, oh, just get rid of him now. We're, we're not doing this. Yep. Who knows? Like, it's, it's a big question mark. So I really think, like, the allure of Villanova's kind of dying, as weird as that sounds. I didn't think I'd ever say that in my lifetime because I thought Jay Wright would be around for another 10 to 15 years, but he, he just I know, he's, he's only, what, 60? Yeah, up and called the quits, which I, I think NIL played a factor in that one as well. But um, he's gone. Rutgers is playing good. 
Syracuse is losing Bayheim soon enough. Um, e- even with Bayheim, they're kind of dog shit right now. Um, Pitts, Pitts yep. on the down. This is Maryland just hired a new coach. This is your chance if you're Rutgers. Take advantage of this Northeast area and just strike while the fire is hot. Like, this is back when I don't want to compare it exactly, but remember when Shiano was taking control and all of a sudden Rutgers was on the up and up and like Wanstead, or what, Wanstead, or however you fuck you say his name, he got fired. Wanstead, and yeah. He came over and, um, who else was it? Angelico came over. Angelico he came over. They, yep. they, and then all of a sudden, they got Gary Nova. They got this. They got Leonta Fru. They got et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And all of, this is kind of that time for hoops. Like, this is it. You got to strike now while the fire is hot. You got a brand new practice facility. You got this. The rack's the best place to play in the Northeast, et cetera. New yep. Jersey's great, blah, blah, blah. Like, NIL. Yeah, yeah. Dylan Harper's coming, maybe. This is it. Like this is Rutgers' chance right now. You could you could be the next big. You could be the next. I don't want to. I don't want to say it. You could be the next UConn. With yeah, Pike I mean Pike's on. seen. Pike's seen. You know what it takes to take a, a program that didn't really have much history and elevating it to heights that a lot of even like their biggest fans couldn't have seen. Um, he's close with Jim Calhoun. He talks to Jim Calhoun all the time. He says so. He's he's got a a legend in his ear. Um, I think he knows what it's going to take, but it's it's a, a weird, windy road now with NIL that he's going to have to navigate. And I think he's done a pretty good job so far. And maybe that's just being hands off and just focusing on coaching and getting his guys better because everything else comes along with that. Like you said, like when you win, people want to be a part of what you're what you're building. And I think that's kind of where we're at. Like you alluded to, um, another guy you you mentioned, uh, Papa Conte, uh, seems like he's drawing closer to a decision and the last time we we spoke about him was with davis uh has that changed at all what are you hearing about him uh no it's kind of the same thing it sounds like he's back in the states now he talked to his family um i expect the decision relatively soon it does sound like michigan it's going to be michigan maryland pittsburgh Rutgers. so right now it sounds like it's michigan Rutgers at the top there's a dark horse in pittsburgh who's kind of making a little bit of leeway here and there um, it's something to monitor, something to keep an eye on. But um, every time I talk to Davis, Davis, Davis really thinks like Rutgers is going to pull this one out. Like, uh, I mean, it's it's going to be tough. Like, I, I, as much as I hear Michigan, 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 it's just so wild to me that like you'd be living with Griff's, you'd be living with Griff's parents, and them not at least. I know they're not going to push him. They say, but like, come on, they're definitely like, hey, like imagine you two playing together still. Like, this would be great. Like. You gotta push it a little yeah. bit, you would think, and and I think Gavin's probably in his ear nonstop. Like it's not, it's no secret. Like Gavin's going to Rutgers. He didn't visit Michigan with with Papa, which he could have. So he's like, this is this is huge. Like I really think Rutgers has a legitimate shot. I don't want to call it fifty fifty. I'd probably say it's more like fifty five forty five Michigan right now, but I think it's extremely close, and I think it could go either way, to be honest. Yeah, that would absolutely be huge to to land a guy like him um, because, like you alluded to, Cliff's a stud, but he's probably not going to be here much longer. He's probably gone after this year, if I had to guess. If if he makes substantial improvements like we all expect him to, especially extending his range, I don't see him sticking around for his senior year because you got to strike when the iron's hot, especially in the NBA. Um, did I miss any names in terms of basketball recruiting that you wanted to touch on before we um, talk about a couple other things? Uh, not that I can think of. I think we got all the hoop stuff done. Perfect. I think, I think. Uh, the big news, yeah, the big news that dropped this morning and today's uh, Thursday the 18th was the Big Ten media deal finally was announced in entirety. Um, so we kind of already knew the the majority of this deal. So Fox getting the uh, the big noon uh, exclusive window for the Big Ten, CBS getting the three thirty exclusive window for the Big Ten, and then the NBC getting the primetime exclusive window for the Big Ten. The other portion that was rumored was that there was going to be some sort of streaming uh, service that also would buy a small package. It sounded like it was going to be Amazon or Apple TV, but it actually ended up being Peacock, which surprised me. There hasn't been any clarification as to whether those would be weeknight games 
or whether they'd be Saturday games that were exclusives. I hope it's weeknight. I hope it's a weeknight game. I hope it's like a Friday nights package because that would be awesome, especially for Rutgers. Um, this deal is massive for Rutgers, especially like the smaller schools in the Big Ten, uh, like you know the Purdue's, the Rutgers, the Maryland's. They are making out like bandits. They're making more than. Alabama gets paid to play on TV, which is absolutely insane. They don't make more than Alabama, but they're making more in terms of media rights. Tell us how big this is going to be for Rutgers, not just, you know, in the near term, but also the long term. Well, I mean, for starters, you can start paying off that bill that you owe to the Big Ten. Um, it sounds like that bill yep. is going to be there till 2027 at least. Uh, <laughs> It's rough. It, it is rough in that in terms of that aspect. But you're going to pay it off a lot quicker, it seems like. Um, you're getting a ton of money. You're getting a shit ton of money. Like, I don't know if you'll ever pay off that bill, actually, the more I think about it. like It's just going to go straight back to athletics. Like Athletics is going to – it's driving the bus right now. And I, I've seen I've seen people like uh, like Bori Blanco and Nina or how, whatever you want to call them on Twitter and the, the boards tweet at fucking uh, – <laughs> like, Rutgers professors saying like, "Hey, what do you think of us now? Now we're making like this much money. Go fuck yourself, pretty much." And I, I find that hilarious. Because, like, <laughs> it, it's true though. Like, you guys want to shit on Rutgers athletics? Like, why did we join the Big Ten? We're throwing a hundred mil a year, and it's like, yeah, dude, we're also raking in like seven hundred mil. Like, fuck off. Like, who cares? Um, yeah. It's it's it is wild. It's huge for Rutgers in terms of revenue. It's going to make your facilities a lot easier to build. It's going to make, um, obviously, you still need donors at the end of the day, but facilities is a huge one. You're going to see that practice facility for football start to kind of get going a little bit. You're going to see a new rack eventually within the next probably year or two, I would think, actually. They're going to start doing some renovations to that rack. Um, baseball facilities, which I actually, I don't know if you saw what I tweeted yesterday, last night. It's pretty late. Um, this is kind of going I off, didn't off, to off topic a little bit. So the New Jersey Jackals, they're forming, they're a minor league team, they're independent, they're going to join a major league team and be like one of the affiliates of a major okay. league team. They're leaving Montclair State. They were, they were at Yogi Bear Stadium at Montclair State. They're leaving, they're not saying where they're going, and they're joining a major league team. Hmm. So speculation says they're going to they're gonna have to get a new stadium somewhere. My idea, hear me out, build, an, build a stadium at Piscataway. You could be you still be the NJ Jackals or whatever. You split it with Rutgers baseball. You have a big brand new fucking minor league stadium in, in Piscataway, right next to the rack. It's beautiful. It's nice. You partner up. You get an MLB team to invest a little bit. Boom. What else do you need? I mean, that would be the easiest way to get this off the ground because obviously there's been an announcement that there would be enhancements to Baton Field for next season. But in reality, when you look around. The, not even like, you know, just the Big Ten, but if you look around college baseball, Rutgers is playing in a glorified high school um, ballpark. I've seen like, better. I've seen it, better high it, school it, ballparks. <laughs> yeah, so it, it is in desperate need of an upgrade, and the baseball team, quite frankly, deserves it at this point. They've been outstanding last year. I mean, they, they showed massive improvement in the first year under Steve Owens, but this looks like... You know, we just got a, a flip from Virginia, which is one of the top programs in, in college baseball for a pitcher. Like, Jeez. this looks like something that's, like, skyrocketing. So we, we definitely need the investment. And I think the easiest way would be some sort of, like, partnership, like you said, because that would also just make it so it's not a vacant stadium for half the year. Um, exactly. it would, you know, there would be people there. It would also be something that could help um, just spur a little bit more of the economy in Piscataway as well because then you could have, like, you know, restaurants and you know maybe a brewery inside the stadium like you could make that work now, and i think that'd be awesome we're talking. <laughs> yeah i mean so i think uh, that it, that'd be pretty pretty sick yeah it's it's interesting because like they they like they talked about the idea of putting the somerset patriots before they built obviously the somerset stadium about putting yep. them at Rutgers, and it was close like it almost happened and then it didn't so i know it's clo it's somerset's still close by it's not too far away but if you're like the, say the Mets or you're the Phillies, and because the Yankees already have Somerset at this point, if you're the Mets or Phillies, like put a team right there. It's local, it's close, and it's not like it's unheard of. Like yep. Penn State does it with the Lehigh Valley. The, I don't even know what the fuck they're called, Iron Pigs or something. The Iron Pigs. They this, yep. Yeah, they do the same, the same exact thing. So why not do it? Like it just makes too much sense not to do this. 
yeah, I, I, I trust Pat Hobbs as well. Like, I assume that he's going to be exploring every avenue to, to kind of make all of his athletic programs uh, better in every single way. So if maybe, maybe, maybe we just need to send him an email to send him this idea. Or you could add him, we could subtweet him in that tweet. Um, yeah. Uh, one really interesting thing about this. It is a cool name. Yeah. I, I didn't know a jackal was like a, uh, a fox wolf looking thing, but yeah. Um, I think two main interesting things came from this media rights announcement as well. One is that the Big Ten made it very clear they are in no way done expanding. It sounds like there'll be further expansion. They're just waiting for the right time to do it, which to me says they're waiting for Notre Dame and then they move to plan B. Because, I mean, I see this as like a first step in strong army Notre Dame into the Big Ten because they're now partners with NBC, who is very in bed with Notre Dame, and they're going to see how the Big Ten kind of helps gain an audience for Notre Dame because Notre Dame's the lead in to the primetime Big Ten game. Yeah. Um, so I see that relationship kind of growing. And the second thing I think is really interesting is that it's a seven year deal. The SEC is currently about to start their, I think it's, uh, I think they start it in 24, if I'm remembering correctly, but they have a 10 year deal with ESPN. So the Big Ten is getting another bite at the apple before the SEC deal comes done and they're already doubling what the sec is getting based on their current deal you could see a massive massive advantage for the big 10 with the next deal as well so they're just playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers with all this stuff kevin warren did a great job with the whole negotiations of this deal and waiting as long as he did uh because he got he's like the big 10's getting more money each year than the NHL and it's almost double in terms of media rights deal what the NHL is getting which is absolutely insane um but that's just kind of how popular football is in the US so those are my two main takeaways that we haven't talked about no i mean it, it is crazy um, um i think like if you look at it like the SEC like it obviously lacks a little bit and i don't want to say it lacks because you still have Kentucky in basketball but like they don't have as much of a strong conference that the Big Ten does in basketball, and I think that paid a big dividend in terms of like money wise too. I know football drives the bus at yep. the end of the day, but having basketball still helps a ton. Like it just helps a shit ton. Like it, it's going to be interesting to see how this network thing works. Uh, I'm intrigued to see like who gets what which year in terms of Big Ten championship because it sounds like it's going to be split between the three. Like one year Fox will get it, yep. one year NBC will get it, and the next year CBS will get it. I guess maybe I don't know how they divide that. Like if, if it's Ohio State, like I don't know Wisconsin. I'm sure like everyone. I, th like, oh, I want I want I want I want like. I think the way that they split it, they already have the years designated for that. Fox yeah. is getting four Big Ten championships. CBS is getting two. NBC is getting one. Still interesting, so but that's I, how it's broken yeah. down. I think. Yep. It's cool. Um, so, yeah, that was a lot of information here, guys. Uh, is there anything, Richie, you wanted to touch on before we sign off for the day? No, I think uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, we're running a promo right now on the, on the night report. 50% uh, off for the year. You have, I think, till tomorrow to sign up for it, the 19th. So, yeah, tomorrow. Um, it's going to be valid all day tomorrow. Um, sign up you get 50 percent off the year it's it's literally instead of paying ten dollars a month or instead of paying hundred dollars a year you're paying 40 something for the entire year I'm like dude I'm like how do you miss out on that um there's a ton of recruiting info that's a great on. deal i know 2023 is kind of dead right now although they did offer a new 2023 kid in uh christopher otto a florida kid uh offensive lineman keep an eye on him we'll have more on him soon as well um, other than that, Florida recruiting, is, uh, Florida recruiting, uh, 2023 recruiting is pretty much done for the most part. We'll have a ton of transfer portal stuff. Um, I'm sure we're going to start up your, uh, your favorite thread that had like over a million views or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a, that's a lot of effort. I, I'm going to wait until after the season. That's typically uh, when it gets fun. Uh, yeah. like the week, uh, the, oh, I think we started it like in November of last year because we had like the one-off kids who would just like quit halfway through the year, like uh, one of our best receivers this year. Um, Raheem Blackshear's back? I mean, yeah. I actually saw him uh, get some good NFL. time in the first week of preseason. Yeah. 
Yeah, I thought he'd do better. Um, I thought he would have been drafted, and he wasn't. And that's what happens when you leave Rutgers. I mean, <laughs> it yeah. is, and the irony is uh, Khalil Herbert transferred from Kansas to Virginia Tech, too, and he's doing yeah. really well for himself with the Bears, and Blackshear not doing so well after yeah. transferring to Virginia Tech. That's the Bears. Um, so, yeah, guys, if you're not a member already of the Night Report, sign up. If you're not a member of uh, Knights of the Raritan, sign up. That's probably the single biggest way you could help Rutgers Athletics. Um, but for Richie and myself, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast, signing off.